Hi there, my name is Jeff Sackman. I run a GMAT prep website called gmathacks.com and I'm putting together a series of videos that walks you through some of the underlying content of the GMAT math section. What I want to talk to you about today is the mean and the median. These are two things that can be grouped under the heading of measures of central tendency, which is just a fancy way of saying middle numbers or representatives of sets of numbers. Both the mean or the average and the median are ways of taking a set of numbers and representing them with one number. So mean is the one you're probably familiar with, the one that you use on a daily basis. So if you go bowling, you bowl three games, and you come up with your average, all you're doing is you're taking the three numbers, let's say a 100, a 110, and a 130. You're taking those three numbers, you're adding them up, and then you're dividing them by the number of terms. So in this case, when we add them up, we get 340. There are three scores. So we get something like 113 and a third. So the exact number isn't important, but notice that we are taking three numbers and we're coming up with a middle term, one that represents the entire set of three numbers. So it doesn't matter whether it's 3 or 7 or 1,752 numbers, the point is that we're coming up with a middle, a measure of central tendency. What does this whole set gather around? So the average, like I've said, it's one you're familiar with, you've probably used in your daily life, and as we've seen, it's pretty easy to calculate, just adding them up, dividing by the number. But that's not the only way that we can represent a set with one number. An alternative is the median. Now a median is always going to be, in most cases, one number in the set. So if we have three bowling scores, 100, 110, and 130, we're lining them up in order, which in this case we've already done, smallest to largest, and we're taking the middle term. So no arithmetic or division required, we're just taking the middle term. So remember that the mean in this case was 113, and the median in this case is 110. Now one of the things I want to help you understand in this video today is why these are different when they're different. So what you'll notice is that in this set, the 130 is the farthest from the middle. 110 and 100 are pretty close together. 130 starts to slightly skew the set. Maybe you went bowling and you just had a magical great game to get that 130. So notice in this case the mean is greater than the median. Now you can imagine that if you change these numbers, you can skew them even further. So let's say that you got a 100, a 110, and a perfect 300 when you went bowling. Now in that case, if you said you got a 300 bowling after a 100 and a 110, I'd probably suspect you of cheating, but let's pretend that really happened. The 300 doesn't change the median at all. It doesn't matter how big this number is, or how small this number is, the median is the middle number. End of story. But if we find the mean again with 100, 110, and 300, we're getting a sum of 510 dividing by 3, we end up with an average of 170. So in the first place, with this set, we had a mean of 113 and a median of 110. In this set, we have a mean of 170 and a median of 110. So it's worth thinking about when the mean is valuable and when the median is valuable. In cases where you want something that's representative of the middle of a set, so let's say you're looking at housing prices in your neighborhood. If you want to know what the median, the middle range house in your neighborhood is selling for, median might be a good number because maybe there's one person who's really built up their house or one person who's really let their house go. In those cases, then the mean might have a skewed number like the 300 or a skewed number like a 40. So the mean might not be that representative of what you're looking for. But if you want to get a full representative of, what the, of what's skewing the bottom and the top, so maybe you've got grades in a class and you want to come up with the average grade of everyone who took a test, then if somebody did very badly, like a 66 instead of an 85, then you want that 66 to be represented. Most of the time on the GMAT, 
we're going to be working with mean, but often they'll be asking you to compare the mean and the median. So when you are asked to compare the mean and the median, that's what you should be thinking about. How much is the set skewed on the bottom? How much is it skewed on the top? So another example I want to show you is when the mean and the median are equal. As we've seen, I just showed you a couple sets where there was one number skewing it on the top end. So we had 100, 110, and 300. But look what happens if we have, let's say, three consecutive numbers. So four consecutive numbers, rather. They're consecutive in the sense that they're all spaced apart by the same amount, by tens. So if we average them all out, we don't need to go through the math right now, but you can do it if you don't believe me. Adding them up, dividing by 4, the mean works out to 115. And the median, this is something I haven't showed you yet, if you have an even number of terms in the set, the median should be right in here, in between the 110 and the 120, and that's exactly what we do. We take the two middle terms, 110 and 120, and average them. So 110 plus 120 divided by 2, that means our median is also 115. So in this case, the mean and the median are the same because nothing is skewing the set in one direction or another. We're not replacing this 100 with a 65. We're not replacing this 130 with a 300. The numbers in the set are evenly spaced. They're consecutive. It doesn't matter whether they're evenly spaced by 10s, by 1s, by 50s, by 3s, whatever. If they're evenly spaced, if they're consecutive, the mean and the median are the same. So what's worth thinking about is what happens if you were to take out this 130 and replace it with 150. It's the same thing we were looking at a few minutes ago. The median doesn't change. We're still looking at these two middle numbers. It doesn't matter what this number is or what this number is. For the purposes of the median, it's completely irrelevant. But for the mean, all of these variables matter. So if we raise this number, what happens to the mean? Does it go up or down? Because this number goes up, the sum of all the numbers goes up, so the mean goes up. So as soon as we change one of the numbers from being consecutive or evenly spaced, the mean changes. The median doesn't necessarily. And it's worth spending some time thinking about how that works, when it happens, because one of the GMAT's favorite types of questions dealing with mean and median is looking at some sets of numbers and talking about what happens when one of the numbers changes or all of the numbers are multiplied by two or one of the numbers is divided by two. So in those cases, you want to have an intuitive understanding of what mean is considering, all the numbers, and what median is considering, just the middle number or the middle two numbers. So understanding the relationship between these two is more important than just knowing the mechanics of calculating them one by one.